Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at our Kuat Sherpa 2.0 2 bike rack right here on our 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe. So the Kuat Sherpa is a pretty good bike rack when it comes to the premium features that you would expect from a Kuat bike rack but not as pricey as let's say a Kuat NV. So we'll take a look at the different features, the different specs, the different measurements just to see if it's the right fit for your bicycles and your Hyundai Santa Fe. So first, we're gonna tilt this down. Um, we have this lever right over here. You're gonna wanna pull that lever and just let it drop down. One thing I noticed with the Kuat Sherpa is it has very smooth movements. Even when you tilt it down, it kind of just glides down. But anyways, you'll want to tilt the bike rack away if you want to access your hatch. So as you can see, there's plenty of space between our door and our handlebars, allowing us to get access our trunk, get whatever we need. So whether we need water or our bags or our helmets, we can get them without having to take our bikes off. Again, notice how much clearance we have between our door and our bike rack. And when that door has lowered, you just lift that bike rack back up and it snaps into place. Whenever you have a bike rack behind your vehicle, there's going to be some length added to it. You also have your different weights on it. Notice how I tilted it up. It wasn't difficult at all. That's also because I have a lighter bike on there. So we have a carbon frame bike and notice the way it's mounted to our bike rack. We have a wheel strap here and we have a front wheel mount as well. So that front wheel mount is pretty much my favorite design when it comes to the way to mount your bike because if you had a traditional frame mount with a hook that comes down, you could risk warping or cracking your frame. With that, you don't have to worry about that. But also for your alternate frame bikes, so your women's bikes, your children's bikes, your step-through bikes, sometimes you have to get a frame adapter bar. You don't have to get those with this one. Over here to the wheel strap, that's where you start when you want to take your bike off. You just press this lever right there, and then you lift that bike up. I actually have it tightened down a lot. There we go. So we'll just lift that strap out of the way, and I try to kind of leave it to the side so it doesn't get caught up in our spokes. Then I come over here to the front, and I hold on to the bike as I do so, so it doesn't tilt back towards our car. I press this button, I lift that hook up, I push that hook out of the way, and from there, it's very easy to just lift our bike up, and we are ready to go on a bike ride. And with our bike out of the way, we get to take a closer look here at the bike rack itself. So here we have our rear cradle. Notice how this tilts back and forth to accommodate different wheelbases. The maximum wheelbase this can accommodate, if you have it out like that, is up to 47 inches. We have this extra thick strap with a rubber lining that goes down and secures your bike's rear wheel. Over here at the front, we have a front wheel cradle. Notice how this also has different grooves on the inside. The maximum tire with this can accommodate is your three inch tires. And this also folds down just like that to be nice, compact, and neat. You also have your front wheel clamp. Notice how that secures your bike's front wheel and it folds down again for a really nice minimalistic look this is actually the kuat sherpa in gray with the orange uh in black with the orange accent sorry in gray with the orange accents but you can also get it with metallic black or in pearl now we'll take some measurements to see how it works here on our vehicle and just how much length is added to the back of it so i'm going to measure from our bumper right there and the furthest point of the bike racks is over here and that's at about 32 and a half inches away. So whenever you're back into your garage or trying to park into a tight spot, please don't forget that you have bicycles as well as a bike behind you, adding a good amount of length to the back of your car. We can also take a look at ground clearance. Ground clearance is underneath the tray to the ground, 19 and a quarter inches. Then over here from the shank to the ground, it sits at around 11 and a half inches. So ground clearance is important on the Santa Fe because of where your hitch is. 
And whenever you go up steep inclines, like your driveways or your hills, your front will go up, your back will go down, and you will appreciate bike racks like these, which have that shank rise, because then your bikes are sitting a bit higher up off the ground. Now, what if you don't want to take your bikes out just yet, but you also don't want to take your bike rack off? You can move this into the compact or the portable position. Remember that lever from earlier? Pull that lever again and just push this up against your vehicle. We'll take some measurements again. The closest point is going to be from our bumper to that arm. And it sits at about three and three quarter inches. The length added to the back of our vehicle is now going to be where that tray is, about eight and three quarter inches. But it does sit out a little bit further where that knob is. And that's about 13 and a half inches. Big difference though compared to when this was folded down. You'll definitely want it in this position when you just want to drive around town. Even though it is a light bike rack, you also might not want to take it off of your hitch. But with it folded up, notice how your rear window is completely visible. Your tail lights are completely visible. Your backup camera is completely visible. Even your license plate is completely visible. So it's really nice to know in the compact or the storage position, you're gonna be perfectly fine when it comes to visibility, as well as really staying legal on the road. Now let's talk about how this fits into our hitch. So what we have on our Santa Fe right now is a two inch hitch receiver. That's why we have the two inch shank on our bike rack. So this pops right into your hitch and you secure it with a hitch pin and a lock. So you also get a cable lock that can go around your bikes and secures kind of where that tray is. And then you only need to use one key to access the whole system. But you can also, as you pop this in, it's a tool free install. So you tighten it down with this knob right over here. It extends a ball cam on the inside of your shank. And then as we do an anti rail test, as I shake our bike rack, I'm mainly shaking the vehicle really showing how secure that fit is between our shank and our hitch receiver making for a smoother ride for your bikes overall they'll still wobble around as you go over bumps in the road and dips but then you don't get extra rattle from an improper fit which is awesome so my personal thoughts about the Kuat sherpa is for one it really looks good on this vehicle i really like how it doesn't cover anything behind your car Behind other cars, sometimes it covers the license plate or the back of camera. It's nice to know that even if I might sort of see the bike rack through my backup camera, I'll still have visibility of the cars behind me, keeping me safe on the road. Another thing is I do like how we have those different features that tilt away. We definitely had access to our hatch. If you have, let's say, e-bikes or your extra heavy bikes, you might want to consider upgrading to the Kuat NV, which has more of a weight capacity, or even the Kuat Transfer 2 bike version, which starts off with a higher weight capacity. But if you like the nice simplistic look of this, again, this has those different colors. If you like that shape and how it looks on your Hyundai Santa Fe, this might be a really good option for you. It checks off all the boxes. So that was a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 2 bike rack right here on our 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. So we can see here how the bike rack moves with our truck.